Ilya, it's going to be an awesome experience. When we're done with the rigging, and I'll walk. And it'll probably be my best highlight ever. They say, comment for the camera. I guess. I'm just tired after all these days. My name is Genya Lizov, and I'm a Highliner. I started with slacklining, just because my friends did it. I also tried walking in the yard, between trees. Actually, I got quickly attached to it, and I learned pretty fast. In a month, I could walk as far as 130 feet, and I tried my first highlines. Then I started walking in the mountains, between tall buildings. When I traveled to Kamchatka, I was going to walk highlands here. For the first time, I came here last year, in 2019. My friends invited me here to go trekking on Klaiyuchevskaya Sopka. But after that, I decided to stay here. I started to look for a job, and I found one. I got a job with Kamchatka Freeride Community. How I met Zenia. In fact, it's an amazing story. I'm even surprised he's with us because it had been a long time before we actually met. First, he texted me, I'm Zenia, I'm in Moscow, I'm looking for a new job. I've got friends in Kamchatka, I'd like to come and work there. I was skeptical about it. Then he gave me a call, but I was still skeptical. I was like, later, okay, call me in three months. So he called me in three months. All right, fine, I got it. He said he was still coming. Okay, if you're coming, come over. And he did. In short, I postponed our meeting three times, but every time he found me. I thought, fine, if the guy is so determined, let's give it a try. He seemed to me so unsociable, though, and he really is. I thought he couldn't make a good tour guide. Jumping ahead, I must say I was wrong. And sometime he was already kayaking, doing things. Great, splendid, awesome. All the easier for me. He worked throughout the previous year and in the fall, and then he said, Kirio, I need to go to Moscow on business. And I said, OK, go. I mean, I didn't know why he was going. So we all stay here in Kamchatka, it's September. And then we get some pics and we're like, oh look, it's Zinya, check it out. And we see Zinya walk a line between the buildings of the Moscow International Business Center. I was so impressed because this ability is kind of unique, but as he was so reserved, he never even mentioned it. So no one actually knew where he was or what he was doing. And it's not only unique, but also amazing. It's not like drinking 300 ounces of beer in one sitting. It's walking a high line, it's fascinating. When he came back, he became a local celebrity, sort of. One hundred and thirty feet is an easy walk. After one hundred and thirty feet, the tape behaves differently. 
Before that, you can control the tape. If it swings left and right, you can stabilize it with the weight of your body. But when it's longer than that, the tape becomes too heavy and you need to adjust to its swinging. You can't get rid of the swinging that easily. The hardest length is around 500 feet. Longer ones, like 650 feet plus, 1,000 feet plus, are easier to walk in terms of technique. But they are also difficult because you have to walk for a long time, stay focused. You also have to be physically fit to walk longer high lines. The idea of this incredible wall came up during the pandemic, I think. When we all stayed together in the Bay House and he practiced, and then I saw him walk a line on that cliff in strong wind with my own eyes, and in real life it was even more impressive. So I said, okay, Zinya, let's do it. I'll do all I can. It wasn't me who offered it, but I had cherished that idea for a long time. I don't even remember how I got that, though. Even before I went to Kamchatka, I had that idea about volcano highlining. I just don't remember how I came up with it. When I climbed Gorelli Volcano for the first time last year, it occurred to me, why don't I just walk a highline here? Highliners have this thing in them. They always think where they could highline. When you see that crater with steep walls over 600 feet deep and like 1,700 feet long, any highliner would get this idea. Back then, I didn't realize how hard it was to rig it. Almost impossible. I didn't do it right away for a number of reasons. First of all, I didn't have the right gear for that walk. Secondly, the logistics was rather obscure. Thirdly, I didn't know how to rig the high line, where to anchor it. There aren't any trees there or rocks. It's pure volcanic cinder and clay. At first, I was at a loss. I had no idea what to do. He came to me. I want to walk above the crater of Gorley. I asked him what he needed. First of all, I need gear. So we bought the gear. Well, he texted some guys. They supported him. Gave him some stuff free of charge, sold some other things with a good discount. He needed a very long tape, over a mile long, then cord, some other stuff. I needed tons of gear. Special slack line equipment. The shop Soya slack line was a great help. Well, at first, I wasn't going to make like a marketing campaign out of it. There were so many ifs and buts. I knew that if it was to happen, it would be in the high season. But it might have not happened at all. I mean, it's not that easy to walk 1,600 feet on a tightrope. So we made no announcements. We didn't say anything. Besides, we had enough resources to do it. I just offered the guys from Sport Marathon to work together because they're our partners. They support us and do some cool stuff. So I said, we've got Zinya and he's going to walk. I make no promises, but if you want to take part, we'll be happy. Zinya had a list of equipment he hadn't bought yet. They said, OK, we'll give you the equipment. There were no official sponsors. It was pure enthusiasm of the crew and Zinya in particular. At first, I wanted to get some highlighters together. But they refused to come. It's mainly because it's usually so windy up there above the volcano. People didn't want to come because it was very unclear if they'd be able to walk at all, even if they come for two weeks. Only Ilya from Komsomolsk on Amur joined us. Our friends from Moscow couldn't make it here. But anyway, he had a very close-knit and amazing team of two slackliners and really cool guys from Kamchatka free ride community. Zinya was eager to walk that line. He spent all his free time either asking me questions or doing something, picking up the tape cutting it, splicing, drying, storing. It was clear it was his dream. We've got a window in the middle of August, and guys managed to bring some stuff and pick a route that saved us lots of time.
We couldn't use the usual rigging technique for Gorli, because there isn't any vegetation there, no solid rock, only fine and loose, sand like dust. One week before the walk, we went to the volcano with the only purpose to take the metal angles to secure the anchors up on top. We had 16 angles, almost 6 feet each. Each angle weighed about 12 pounds. We also had a camp gear. The four of us took it all up at one go. We get out of the truck, and I see Vovka taking six or seven angles. Ilya takes about the same. Genya looked surprised. Will we take it all up at once? We were like, yes, well, all right. Genya, could you find a smaller volcano? It's the smallest. Yeah, it was hard, but we did it. We brought it all up. We walked for like four hours. The walk was around three miles. The elevation, well over 3,000 feet. The next gap was the last one. I already decided that if we don't get to do it until October, we won't do it this year at all because of snow. And then we had a spell of good weather. It was sunny and not too windy for four days. And so we set off. It was around 50 degrees just a couple of weeks ago. And then, all of a sudden, it's 32, 28, 26. It makes you think. 180 pounds of tape, then loops, hardware, various links and carabiners, lots of angles. It all weighs, like, a lot. I think we had to take around 450 pounds up the volcano. summer down jacket isn't some joke. It's a must-have for Kamchatka. I mean, every earnest dweller of Kamchatka has one. We always carry one in the bag or in the car, even when we go to the beach for a swim. We also have a summer mittens and summer woolen hats. Volodya Kotliar joined us for that trip. At the time, he was a totally new member of our team. He's a mountain guide used to working at high altitudes. Kirill called me and asked if I wanted to help Zhenya take his gear up to Gareli because he needed to pull tape above the crater for his highline walk. I agreed at once. Well, I'm game for anything. I'm always in for some fun. And being part of a walk above the crater of a volcano, it's a dream. So there were more people on our third trip. We could take more equipment, more weight. We took everything up in two goes. Vova's a bloody camel. He and Zinya carried more than anyone, both up and down. Without him, our backpacks would have been way heavier. We carried a lot, walked a lot. 
pumped us up. Well, he's a real mountaineer. If things had gone wrong at some point, Vova would have been one of the rescue team because he has the knowledge and skill. Henry the snail carried his house on his back. He could get up and leave without having to pack. I like Highlines for their uniqueness. Every project is different. Unfortunately, the guys did it a little bit wrong. They took out the entire cord and put it on the ground, and then into another backpack. It's totally wrong. Now we have 1,000 feet of a mess up. We'll set the second anchor on the crest, next to the steaming fumarole. When we considered this place for our anchor, it wasn't steaming for some reason. Won't you need to breathe while walking? Well, I'd like to. You walk with that bag. Your cord will stick out of that bag. It will always be there. Suspend it. First, we pulled the cord and used it to pull the tape over the crater. It was a tough challenge to pull almost 1,700 feet of tape above the crater. Actually, we didn't have a lot of unforeseen or unexpected incidents with tensioning. I thought it wouldn't take much time, but, as it often happens, tensioning takes longer than you would expect. We have special tape for Highline. Textile polyester one-inch tape can support around 2.7 tons. We have two tapes, the main one and a backup harness. If the main one fails, the backup tape will hold. Our Highline won't be made of one tape. It will include a few 330-foot pieces. It's also for safety reasons, because if one 1,700-foot tape fails, you can fall somewhere to the very bottom. Therefore, we have 330-foot sections, and if you do fall, you fall as if it was a 330-foot Highline. It's good we had Ilya, because he worked on two anchors on two different sides. And both sides had people who knew what we needed to do, and we were the main physical force. Frankly speaking, no one wondered how much time it would take. Xenia said it was quick, but in fact, the tension took around four or five hours. Days are short now, and we pulled it tight enough to walk it by around 5 p.m., when it already begins to get dark. And then it rained. Well, not quite rained. A cloud approached the volcano, it got darker, it was very hard to see, and it was drizzling or sort of. It wasn't rain, but rather fog and drizzle. So it's already five, everyone is getting a little discouraged because everyone wants to try to walk the line. And the forecast promised better weather. We're going to get back to the camp, but Zenya says, I'll go. We were on the opposite side, so we didn't see much because of the fog. It's so high. It's so cool. Ah, 
вот, вот оно. Скользкое место. Zenia set off. He was walking for about an hour. We couldn't see him from one side, we couldn't see him from the other. He was out there. Well, at least he showed signs of life over the radio. Then we began to feel the tape swinging in Zenia's falls. We could count how many times he slipped, and it was a lot. Later we found out that the tape was slippery because it was wet and icy. It was already six or half past seven. The sun was about to set when Zenia finally walked out of the fog. It was very wet and cold. The tape just turned into ice. It was really slippery. Besides, it was quite a large angle at the beginning and at the end of the tape, so I just glided there. I, like, rolled down the tape because it was so slippery, a bit too slippery. I've tried highlining in the fog, and it's tricky. When you have no reference points, when you're in the middle of a cloud, your brain starts to act up. You feel sick, dizzy. If you have it in you to highline in the fog, you rock. Basically, it was our small victory. I mean, we've accomplished the first mission, pull and try the line. It was already something. Then we went down. It started snowing. The weather turned nasty. But I can say we were lucky because the next day was sunny. And Zinya did his best walk. You know what? We need to ask all people who'll be there for water. We need to beg on our knees. <laughs> Guys, get your cups ready. Jenya did a great job, considering the circumstances. It's not warm, Crimean rocks with perfect weather. It's not the Caucasus Mountains in summer. It's Kamchatka. It's fall, it's cold, windy and harsh. The most surprising thing for me was that first, Zenya carried around a hundred pounds up to the top. Every muscle in your body gets sore, the back, the legs. Then we go over to pulling the tape. It's also exhausting. And then he walks. It's not like we rigged the high line. He had a two-day rest, had his massage, and then he walked. Not at all. It all happened non-stop. It's much harder than just walking. It was very comfortable to walk. I slipped six times. Two more times I had to sit down on the tape because the ring in my safety harness that follows me along the tape got stuck in the connection points. I tried pulling the leash, but it just wouldn't go, so I had to sit down. Actually, I think it's a good result for me, because before that, the longest I had highlined was 1,000 feet. 
and I've never slipped. It's my first high line over 1,000 feet. If I could relax for a day and then, with renewed strength, make a few attempts, I would probably walk without slipping at all then because it was really nice to walk that line. Потом со свежими силами сделать еще несколько попыток, но вполне возможно, что и я бы смог ее пройти совсем без срывов, потому что мне было прям очень приятно идти. Человек прошел. A man has walked above a crater of a volcano in Russia. It's a historical moment. The worst thing was that the wind was getting stronger. The weather changed dramatically every minute, and when Jenya came back, it was my turn to walk. The tape was rocking. It was hard even to sit on. I got up and I started to walk. I kept falling and falling. It was really hard. And then I felt my legs couldn't carry me anymore. They were weak and shaking. Every step was a huge effort. In total, I only walked around 250 feet in, in 40 minutes. On the third day, the high line was impossible to walk. Very slippery. The tape didn't seem icy, but it was covered with snow and frost, so it was really, really slippery. It was a big challenge. Yesterday, only the last 200 or 250 feet were hard. Now, I only walked a little over 200 feet. I had, like, a billion falls. We realized it was time to wrap it up. Personally for me, two aspects were especially amazing. First of all, I saw someone who could and wanted to do that. Secondly, I understood it was a team project. I realized what it means to develop such a project and then implement it. We wanted as many of our team members as possible to be engaged in this so that they wouldn't constrain themselves to commercial projects, but also did something awesome and challenging. In fact, we could hire a chopper and have all the equipment and people delivered right on the spot. But as I understood later from conversations, everyone was glad we did it all on our own. But next time we'll just fly to Gorley because we won't have to bring it all up to the top. The biggest and most interesting challenge was to take all the gear to the volcano on our own. High lines are rarely set up in such harsh conditions, at sub-freezing temperatures, when you have to carry all your gear very high up a mountain. Actually, it was a week of work, but not for one or two people. A week of work for the whole team. I'm so happy that, even in this difficult year, we managed to implement such an ambitious and complex project. Volcanoes are in my heart forever. Next year, I will definitely come and do everything to walk that line again. I don't consider myself special or anything. 
But I do have some mixed feelings because so many people were willing to help me. It was actually only me and Ilya who walked. The others just helped us and did super hard work just to make our walk possible. It felt very nice and unusual. It's hard to express what I feel about it. This project shows that we are ready for such events. Doing something new, something challenging in remote and hard to access areas. In our business, we always try to do something others don't. We are open to our customers' offers and suggestions beyond the classic tourism in Kamchatka. We will continue to encourage our team members to fulfill their ambitions in sports and other areas. And I hope we'll have more projects like this. And if you have any unusual ideas, something no one has done before, I'm sure we can help you make your dreams come true. So don't hesitate to contact us. Kicked out the Garden of Eden. No, I didn't bring a sleeping bag. I thought Kirill would take one. What's the forecast for the night? Around 25. Not too cold. Fine. Sleep well, huh? Fine. Change the past, change the past. Change the past, I would change the past for you. If I only could. Zinya, run! Run, Zinya, run! Here. How did it happen? Crap. Looking over these burned out ruins and the trail that's left behind.